Well guys, in this video today, we're gonna to be breaking down a stock and I'm really excited for this stock. I just finished researching it. Just went to the 10K, 10Q, investor presentation, conference call, looked in the CEO, the whole nine yards. And I am super, super, super excited for this because I think this stock could easily be a home run stock. But before we get into that, guys, please, please, please like this video. It really helps out the channel. It really helps the channel grow in a massive way. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. So this stock is Dropbox, ticker symbol DBX. And I first got this idea from financial education. And if you guys don't know that channel, he basically breaks down stocks and he goes over different stocks, what the market's doing, where it's going to go next, stuff like that. And a couple of weeks ago, he started talking about Dropbox and he went video after video and he just kept talking about it and how he was gonna make it his number one position. And he even went as far as to call it an easy money stock. And he doesn't do that very often. He's probably only done it three or four times on the channel. So once he started saying stuff like that, I'm like, you know what? I like easy money. I really gotta look into this stock. I gotta make a video about it. So in short, Dropbox is basically like another cloud platform. Think of like Snowflake or like Google Drive. Google Drive is a better example, stuff like that. And Dropbox first started off in 2007 and actually came out with the name Everflow. And that name did not last very long, obviously, because the name of it Dropbox now. And they changed that name in 2009, just to give you a little bit of a backstory here. And that company was found in 2007 with the idea of life would be better if everyone could access their most important information anytime from any device. As for the business model, which is the first thing you should look into when you start looking into a stock, Dropbox basically wants to create the first smart workplace. On their investor relations page, they have written these days everything is smart your phone your credit card your car maybe even your house but at work not so much work is a mess with documents and conversations spread across different platforms that don't connect it's not your fault technology at work just hasn't caught up it's time for work to get smart that's why dropbox is building the world's first smart workplace and for the smart workplace explanation if you did not get that idea a smart workplace is a digital environment that brings all of a team's content together with the tools they love it helps users cut through the clutter and surfaces the work that matters most first it connects all the content and tools you use for work so everything is easily accessible no more switching between platforms apps and content types a smart workplace lets you use them in one place second it brings together the people and conversation associated with a file or project. The context for your work is all here, instead of scattered across fragmented communication channels. Third, it uses machine intelligence to cut through the clutter and surface what matters most. It suggests which content you'll need for a meeting or which might be relevant to a document you're editing and even recognizes images so you don't have to remember file names. As for what they sell, they sell subscription plans, which means their revenue is recurring. Our premium subscription plans such as professional advanced provide more functionality than other subscription plans and have higher per user prices. Our standard and advanced subscription plans offer robust capabilities for business and the vast majority of Dropbox business teams purchase or standard and advanced subscription plans. While our enterprise subscription plans offer more opportunities customization, companies can subscribe to any of these team plans for their business needs. Now the individual subscribers, like for example me, because I use Dropbox now, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit here. They're just gonna use the plus the professional plan. Say you're looking for like multiple licenses, like you wanna get a whole like business or a whole team on there. That's gonna be more of the standard, advanced, or the enterprise plans. So you can either subscribe to these plans and pay them monthly or annually. And I think annual is the more common one from what I was getting from the 10Q that most people do. Their plus plans come out to about $120 a year or $11.99 a month if you wanna pay monthly. The professional is about 200 a year or if you wanna pay monthly, $19.99. The standard comes out to about 150 a month or if you wanna pay monthly, $15. And lastly, the advanced plan comes out to about 240 annually or if you prefer to pay monthly for whatever reason, $25. So basically they're shaving a couple percentage points if you decide to pay in full for the whole year. As of right now, Dropbox has 600 million subscribers. That's total, which means that includes the free subscribers like myself. They have 15 million paid subscribers and they're up 1.4 million paid subscribers since last June when it was at 3.6 million. And they do plan to grow this company in kind of three different ways. And I'll just read what it says in 10Q about growing this. The first way is they wanna drive new signups. Acquire users effectively at relatively low cost signups through word of mouth referrals, direct in product referrals and sharing content. The second is Dropbox just wants to increase the conversion of just plain free registered users to paid subscription plans. Actively encourage users to upgrade to one of their paid plans. Do this via in product prompts and notifications time limited free trial of paid subscription plans, email campaigns, and lifestyle marketing. And lastly, they wanna upgrade and expand existing customers. Encourage more people to sign up, 
people to upgrade. Now I talked about in my Zoom video, I really want to see specifics here. I didn't like the way Zoom was trying to grow their company because it wasn't specific enough. And let me tell you, this, someone might think that this is along the similar lines. They might think, well, it's not very specific. It's just, oh, let's drive a new sign up. There's no tangible. I love, 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 love what this company is doing. And here's why. In a world where everything's moving online and everything's encouraged to be online, and granted, I thought everything was gonna move online eventually. And also, let me be clear, even if this virus wasn't a thing, I would still love this company. I'd still be buying into it heavily. But in a world where everything is moving towards online, what is really gonna leave a mark? What is gonna leave a lasting impression? What people should you target? And in my opinion, the place that to target, which Dropbox is targeting, is the schools, universities, state colleges, high schools, all of the schools. Think about it, if you go to college and you use this product and then you go into the workforce, some people are gonna go and own their own business, they're not gonna use the degree they had. Some people are gonna go work a nine to five in a cubicle. Some are gonna work eight to four from home. Everyone's gonna have a different path. But there will most likely have some sort of team chat, especially if you're working from home, but even if you're not, if you're in a cubicle, you're probably gonna have some sort of team chat, especially if your department's really big so you don't have to walk a mile across the office to get there. And if you're familiar with this Dropbox, then that's what they're gonna download for the entire team, for the entire department. They're gonna download that because they're already familiar with it. They know how to set it up, they know how it functions, and it'll save them a ton of time and they won't have to learn anything new. And I think this because this is how I function. When I was in high school and Google Drive came out, that's what I started using and that's what I've been using ever since. Look at the schools Dropbox is affiliated with. University of Sydney. So it's not just schools in the United States, first of all. Cal State Fullerton, University of Michigan, Arizona State University, University of Florida, just to name a few. Now look at some of the biggest college populations in the United States. Cal State Fullerton, number two. University of Florida, number seven. And for the record, University of Sydney has over 70,000 students. And that's not even to mention HelloSign, which they bought in February of last year. And for those of you that don't know, basically HelloSign is signing documents electronically, which is huge in these days, huge, especially when you can't go meet people for meetings. I tried this out and I loved it. I was using Adobe Reader for stuff like this. I'll never use it again. I will for always, always, always use Dropbox and HelloSign. Adobe Reader just kind of signs your name for you. It's just like basically typing your name out. But HelloSign, you actually get to leave a real signature, which is Awesome. So this would be good for like say high school students or even middle school students and think of it this way for like a field trip. So the teacher just puts their permission slip in Dropbox and the parents can go in and download it and just sign it and send it right back to the teacher or put it right back in the Dropbox folder and they don't even have to print anything and that permission slip would be ready in minutes. Like so say if a student forgets their permission slip when the day it's due, he can just text his mom or call his mom and just be like, hey, can you sign this so I can go on this trip? And it's that convenient. And think of this too, you're gonna to be saving so much paper. Imagine that, say you're printing 20 to 30 permission slips per class and you just eliminate that, that is so much paper saved over a long period of time. And the only company that really comes to mind off the top of my head that can compete with just HelloSign in general is DocSign. Granted, I think DocSign is gonna actually be the number one player in this field over the long term, mainly because that's just their main focus is electronic signatures, but that doesn't mean Dropbox can, and HelloSign can become the number two player in this field by any means. And they're not even focused on that field. That's the crazy thing. Income statement. Sales and revenue since 2016 has continued to increase. 40% in 2016, 31% in 2017, 26% in 2018, and almost 20% in 2019. And the second quarter of 2020 revenue was up another 18% year over year. Operating expenses. Basically, they're broken down into three areas. Research and development, sales and marketing, and general and administrative. I love, love, love how these are in this order because that's the way I think they should be. I feel research and development is the most important of these three expenses, so Dropbox can continue to improve and become a major player in this cloud space area. And although sales and marketing is definitely important and at a certain point, I don't wanna say you don't have to do any sales and marketing because you're always going to have to, but in theory, this product will eventually market itself. It's gonna be like Google Drive, just everyone knows what it is. Think of it like compound interest. At a certain point after 30 years, we have so much accumulated interest, it's like you're bringing in more money and investments that you know what to do with, and your money, your capital just goes right through the roof. You've put that $200 a month in an index fund for 40 years, and before you even know it, your investments are bringing you in $50,000, $100,000 a year, and you're not even doing anything. Gross income, 
also increasing at fantastic rates, 131% in 2016, 62% in 2017, 35% in 2018, and 25% in 2019. And look at these margins, guys. Just look, look at the margins. They are fantastic. 78% gross margins, which I believe is up 3% for the, for the year. And for reference, Apple last year had 38% gross margins. Amazon, 40% gross margins last year. And the highest gross margins Google has ever had over the last 13 years, 65% percent net income this company took losses of 326 million 210 million 111 million 485 million and 52 million in 2015 16 17 18 and 19 but 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 as of the first quarter of 2020 they're profitable and profitable ahead of schedule in the first quarter of 2020 they brought in just under 40 million of net profit net not gross net and in the second quarter Dropbox brought in 93 million of net income. Balance sheet, you knew we were gonna end up here eventually. 2.7 billion in total assets, 1.2 billion in current assets. They did move some money around, they took some money out of cash and they did place it more into short-term investments since December 2019. And these assets have continued to grow year over year. Current assets, 35% growth in 2015, 35% growth in 2016, 42% growth in 2017, 64% growth in 2018, and 42% growth in 2019. Total assets. After having a couple of like break even years in 2016 and 17, the company went public in 2018 and saw 66% growth, followed by 60% growth in 2019. Liabilities, short term debt, nothing, LOL. As of 2019, they have less than 80 million in short term debt. Laugh out loud, that is nothing. And for long term debt, as of 2019, they have 850 million. Total current liabilities, 981 million in total current liabilities. That is as of their most recent quarter, which is back in June of this year. And for total liabilities, they have approximately 1.9 billion, which again is as of their most recent quarter in June of 2020. As for the CEO, Drew Hudson, love him, love him. Hudson's actually the founder of this company, which I really like to see founder led companies, mainly because it's kind of like your baby, you know, you brought into this world, you want to grow it, you want to bring it up and you just want to see it fly and live and grow into something fantastic. He started coding computers and working with computers very young. I actually read an interview about him and he talks about how his dad, who was an engineer, started showing him coding principles just as a young toddler. His first job was actually as a beta tester for a game. He actually got frustrated with developers and they really weren't moving fast enough in the testing. So he decided to go ahead and tell them what was wrong and how to fix it. And they ended up hiring him. Oh yeah, he was 14 at the time. So his dad had to fill out working papers for him. Just imagine that being 14 and telling this company all the security things that they did wrong. They end up hiring you, but your dad has to fill up working papers, LOL. He also studied computer science at MIT. So he definitely has the educational background for this field. Here's something I really love. That interview I read about him. One of the questions that was asked was, what were some early leadership lessons after starting Dropbox? And he answered with, the first thing is having a healthy paranoia for trying to find out what you don't know that you don't know. The question I would ask myself, even in the beginning, and I still do today, is six months from now, 12 months from now, five years from now, what will I wish I had been doing today or learning today? He also goes on to say, reading has been essential. I have always wondered why people put so much energy into trying to have coffee with some famous entrepreneur when reading a book is like getting many hours of their most crystallized thoughts. Let me tell you, I love this answer, mainly because one, he's a long-term thinker, two, he's a problem solver, and three, he understands that anyone can learn anything and you don't just have to pay someone tons and tons of money to learn something, especially in this day and age when the information is literally at your fingertips. You can Google anything. Sometimes like when people ask me questions, I'm like, did you even think to Google it? Like, did you even open Google Chrome? Did you even open Safari? Like it's actually that simple and I love how he has this mindset. He's also continued to upgrade the company in the second quarter, which I love the innovation. They launched Dropbox Passwords, which enables users to store login credentials for apps and sync them to all devices. They launched the Vault feature, which is just a secure folder. It's basically an extra layer of security for all like imperative files you might have. And you can only access it with a pin code. Computer backup. This automatically just backs up folders on a PC or on a Mac directly into your Dropbox. Dropbox family. This feature allows families to share photos and other important documents that you might have and Dropbox App Center. And with this, you can basically just use commonly used tools in your Dropbox account like Canva, Google, etc. Now, some of you might say, what about Google Drive? What about Microsoft Teams? They're big, big, big players in this industry. What are they gonna do? They're gonna knock Dropbox off. They can't compete with them. Dropbox, just under an $8 billion market cap. Google has just around a trillion dollar market cap. Microsoft, $1.5 trillion market cap. Slack, $15 billion market cap. Zoom. $137 million market cap. 
Basically the point I'm trying to make here is Dropbox is undervalued. One, Dropbox solely focuses on the smart workspace area while Google and Microsoft, they're kind of focusing on a lot of different things going on. And two, unlike these companies, Dropbox is an open ecosystem. You can access all of these platforms from Dropbox. If you have a Word document, you can upload it to Dropbox and look at it as a Word document. If you have something on Google Drive, you can do the same thing. They were basically able to diversify in a space. It's so hard to diversify and I can't believe it. Like I said before, I've used Google Drive since high school because I love the cloud platform and I love the platform. I actually checked out Dropbox because before I bought into it, I wanted to check out the product. And I loved it. It's so simple. You can use everything on there. I don't have to go back between Microsoft Word, Google Drive, and anything else. I can use everything in Dropbox. I loved it so much, I actually stopped using Google Drive immediately after I checked it out and just started using Dropbox specifically. Let's see what analysts predict here. Revenue estimates, 14% this quarter, 10% next quarter, 14% for the year, and 10% next year. And guys, don't be surprised if this number is smashed. Growth estimates, 38% for the current quarter, 25% for next quarter, 56% for the year, 16% for next year, and 16% for the next five years. I really love this company. I actually looked into it for like over two weeks because I just didn't know if it was real. I saw everything and I checked all the boxes I wanted to see checked and I have bought into it and I am super excited for it. But as always, guys, make sure you do your own research. Don't just buy this because I think it's good and I see it going places and I see it going up over the next five, 10 years. You have to do your own research, you have to develop your own opinions, and that's the important thing in the stock market. And saying that, guys, that's gonna be it for this Dropbox analysis. Let me know in the comments if you're buying Dropbox and what you think of Dropbox. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel as always, and I will see you guys in the next video.